In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth. And if you notice in verse 11, we'll read, But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one not even to eat with. So Paul is telling us if we know of a brother or sister who is engaging in these sinful behaviors, that we are not to fellowship with them, not keep company with them, not even to sit down and eat with them. He is not telling us to remove and extract ourselves from the congregation. If anything, the Bible clearly states, um, them that sin rebuke before all, that others may fear also. Uh, the sinner must go, uh, such as the man who was committing fornication with his, mother's, with his father's wife. He was in sin, and they, they, and Paul said, deliver such an one over to this to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, and he was expelled from the church, and the Bible even states that he was being overcome by much sorrow, swallowed up by much sorrow, and who knows where that would have led to, probably suicide. So once he had repented, they were to receive him back into the environment or into the congregation. So the sinner gets expelled. The saints don't come out of the congregation. Amen. For God has established the church. He has set up the church uh, so we can edify one another, so we can assemble and exhort one another. Forsake not the assembling of the saints, as the manner of some is. So Paul is not telling the, the Christian, the believer, the saint of God to come out from the churches. I mean, all the epistles are written to the churches. In Matthew chapter 16, the Bible states, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Each man is going to be awarded or rewarded according to his own works. Also in Romans chapter 2, notice what the Bible reads. Romans chapter 2, verse 6 who will render to every man according to his deeds. Not their deeds, but his own deeds. Every man is going to be judged according to his actions. And in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Not their doings, but his own doings. So we see here through these four scriptures that we just read that every man, God is going to judge every man according to his own doings. Jesus Christ knows how to distinguish the righteous from the unrighteous. Coming out of her, my people, doesn't mean that we are to come out of all the local congregations. In Revelation chapter 3, let's take a notice at how Jesus Christ deals with uh, one of the churches, one of the local churches. Uh, the church at Sardis, verse 4, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Now there you have it. The church at Sardis, that was composed of so-called saints, Jesus seen through all that, and he was able to detect that there were only a few there that were not living defiled lifestyles, that were not uh, living as sinners that were true in their heart, that were uh, spotless without, without any sort of blemish before the Lord. And they were worthy to walk with him in white. Now, he didn't say uh, there are a few names in Sardis who should have come out of that church. Now they are going to be destroyed by my plagues because they did not listen when I said, come out of her, my people, that you be not destroyed with her plagues. No. God is able to spare the righteous. He's able to uh, seclude the righteous uh, when judgment comes. He doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. He doesn't get rid of the whole. Uh, the Apostle Paul, Peter, James, John, they didn't tell the, the churches to close shop because there's a few sinners in your congregation. Just close the doors, close shop, shut down. The building structure uh, that houses the congregation, the house the shack, whatever it is, uh, doesn't need to be destroyed. 
the individuals within those structures, within those places, shall be held accountable for their actions, their doings, their lifestyle. God judges each and every man according to their own doings. But the problem here is what we have is we have one who is sowing discord. And six things are an abomination unto God, yea, seven. And one of them is the one who speaks lies, Proverbs chapter 6. Let's just go ahead and read it. I don't want to misquote it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, um, verse 16. This, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Verse 19, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. So we need to understand it's the enemy's job to sow discord among the brethren because God has established the church on this earth and he's composed it with the believers, those who are in the faith, members in particular. And we are to exhort one another, edify one another until the day of the Lord comes. I want to end with a parable in Matthew chapter 13 uh, concerning the wheat and the tares. Verse 24, the Bible reads, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. But while the men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Notice, the, peers, the tares appeared. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in the field? From whence then hath the tares come? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Or in other words, would you like for us to go and pull out the tares from amongst the wheat? But he said, Nay, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. So he's saying, Don't gather up the tares just yet. Let them both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. God knows how to distinguish the righteous from the unrighteous. He says, let them grow together. Because one day, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares, the sheep from the goats, the real from the fake. Yes, there are those in our congregations that are living in adultery, fornication, drunkenness, open rebellion. They need to be rebuked. Yes, there will be bad apples, but we don't cut down the whole tree. We get rid of the bad apples. We deal with them. That's how it must be. 